we're trying to catch wild, free-ranging manatees so that we can do health assessments on them. Through those health assessments where we get a glimpse of how well they're doing nutritionally and biomedically. And we want to know, to profile these manatees, how well they're doing so that future generations of manatees that come in and utilize this area, and we know the population is going to grow, how that population is going to be responsive and how healthy that population is. So we have in Crystal River maybe 700 manatees right now, and we're hoping in the next 10 years, in the next 15 years, we'll double that. So if what happens when you have 1,400 manatees in this population? And we want to see and monitor those animals to see if there's some nutritional conditions we need to be concerned about or whether there's good plenty habitat for them and vegetation for them to feed on. So the process entails taking this net. We go out around the manatee and circle the manatee when they're swimming. And they're not in the sanctuary. These are manatees that have chosen to come out of the warm water, go down and feed, or they're just traveling around, transient animals. We catch those manatees, bring them over, do the health assessment, just like you would if you went to your doctor, had a physical, and then got a good bill of health. And every manatee that we've seen up to this point has actually done really well in this population. If I were a manatee, I'd want to live here too. Once the manatee is caught, pulled by this team up onto the beach, and it's uh, actually secured. This is the hard part. This is where the manatee's going to thrash because they're out of their element. So you'll see a lot of turning and thrashing during these activities. Once we restrain the manatee and it's out of water, it becomes very complacent and calm. Then we put it on a transport boat. We bring it over to another beach where it's sheltered and we have a comfortable area for the manatee under tents with heaters. We can keep them nice and warm and we can do our physicals there. We can do our, uh, our lab analyses and collect our samples. We collect blood. We pit tag them just like we do for our pets so that we can identify them later if they're ever recovered or if they're captured again. And in this population, we've caught 165 manatees since 2006. So in Crystal River, we pretty much know how the manatees are doing, keep a good handle on that. We also do morphometrics. We do photos just like we do to keep track of the individuals. So there's scar patterns. Sometimes they have extensive scar patterns. Sometimes they don't have much of a scar pattern at all. So we try to document that. We get the morphometrics and the weight, and we try to determine how well that manatee's doing for that profile that we're trying to get. Then we try to keep the manatee out of the water for as, as short a time as possible. We keep it under a golden hour, and then we uh, actually take it out, and we release it back into the environment. In some situations, we're able to take a radio tag and put it on the manatee. And here in Crystal River, you've seen manatees swimming around, toting these radios. And those radios are actually giving us information about where they're going, and what they're doing, and what habitat's important to them. So part of the bigger, broader picture is once they leave the beach here and we radio tag them, then we get a glimpse. They're teaching us, basically, what the habitat is important for them and where they're going. And through that monitoring, we can, we can get a lot of inference about the population here.